Okay, so briefly, we have a situation where we have 58 flu cases on day 80, 34 flu cases on day 100. This is good because the number of flu cases is going down, right? None of us wants the flu. Some of us might have had it, but uh, glad everybody's alive. Okay, now, when we have data like this, well, we make a graph. So we have, I'll say infections, because that's the word I use in the statement, and day. Okay? So, label these points, draw the fundamental triangles. I want one along the line through those points that goes to the point X, Y, and the other one between the two points. So now we get we can get the equation. As I said, you can plug these numbers into a point two point form for the equation. You can find the slope and then plug it into the point slope form if you want. Okay? You have all kinds of options. You can do as some people did and use y equals mx plus b and get two equations for m and b, just like we did for a quadratic model. Okay? I think, Sophia, you did that. Okay? That's a perfectly good way to do it. Okay? Unless I ask you to do it some other way. <laughs> all right? And I actually like that way because it's more consistent with the way we did the, 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 the quadratic model, but we'll get to that. Okay? Right now, I'm kind of emphasizing fundamental triangles. So we got 20 here and negative 24 here. So the slope is negative 24 over 20, which is negative 6 fifths. Might be a little hard to read, but you know what I'm doing. Okay? And then here, you've got uh, x minus 100 and y minus 34, so the slope here is y minus 34 over x minus 100, and I apologize for having written this too small, we put a box around it, and now we can simply write, well, this slope is equal to this slope, and we get the equation, right? Okay, now I'm going to do this in my head, so it'll be wrong. But I think maybe the negative six, six fifths x is a no-brainer. But then let's see, negative six fifths of ten. Fortunately, that comes out a whole number, right? Comes out twelve. And then we add thirty-four. So there we have it. And that can't possibly be right. That's completely ridiculous. Clearly, the y intercept is not 46. Would you agree? Okay. So, how could this possibly be wrong? This is negative slope, negative 6 fifths, negative 24, 20, and y minus. 34, because that is a y value, and x minus 100. That's x minus 100, not 10. How did you all let me do that? Okay. Now, you understand that what I did was I discovered, it was an honest error. Yeah, I just didn't see the extra zero. It's not a very good zero. It's not my fault. Actually, it is. I wrote it. Okay, so... Having astutely checked my solution against common sense, I know darn well that this solution would have given me a y-intercept of 46, right? Which is lower than this, but the y-intercept has to be more than 58, doesn't it? And you got quite a ways to go from 80 to 0, so it's going to be a lot more than 58. Okay? Now, if I do 100 times 6 fifths, which I got to get 120, right? And I add that to 34, and I see that my 46 was no good, which I did recognize, but that's going to give me plus 154. And that makes more sense. 
If you extrapolate this all the way over to here, you could easily be up to 154, especially if your graph is to scale. I don't have 80 out quite far enough. If 100 is here and 80 is here, then that ain't zero. Okay? But anyhow, we can think about the numbers and we can understand that. Okay, so now we can answer questions. So what are some of the questions? And how are you going to answer them?